Hi, my name is Edward. Uh, I lead customer support here at Pathfind, and I also help uh, manage our integration with Ray. Hi, uh, my name is Sahar. I'm the lead simulation engineer at Pathmind. So uh, in this talk, uh, we're going over uh, four topics. So the first is why we're using Ray, uh, a high-level overview of a typical industrial engineering workflow, and various optimization tactics. So heuristics, optimizers, and, and reinforced learning. Uh, why and when uh, you should use reinforced learning. And finally, uh, a quick demo of reinforced learning applied to uh, a temperature control system. Uh, so before we proceed, uh, I just wanted to mention that this session will be more of a high-level overview. So if you're looking for something more technical, uh, feel free to cut out. All right. So uh, think of Pathfind as this bridge between real-life industrial processes and reinforcement learning powered by Ray. So Pathfind itself is a software-as-a-service platform that makes it easy uh, to train reinforcement learning policies. Uh, so our goal is to make it easy for industrial engineers who typically don't have a data science or software engineering background uh, to take advantage of reinforcement learning. And uh, the reason we kind of chose Ray was because uh, it's, it's super easy to implement and it comes with all the algorithms and tools that we need out of box so we don't have to build anything from scratch. So all, all we really do is kind of maintain this bridge here. So at the top, uh, you can see a simplified industrial engineering workflow. Uh, most industrial engineers would operate uh, inside this box right here which is their simulation environment. Uh, this box here, the simulation environment, is, is the vehicle for exploring scenarios with the goal of improving business processes. So, so using the simulation as a vehicle, uh, industrial engineers typically uh, optimize processes in, in three ways, right? So we, we also call them decisions. So the most common approach is uh, heuristic. Uh, which is basically a set of static rules defined by a domain expert. And these rules tell a system how it should react to certain scenarios. So, so think like a, a series of if statements. Uh, the second is the optimizer, uh, not as common as a heuristic, uh, but what optimizer does is that it automatically finds the best set of parameters uh, that minimizes or maximizes uh, a, a metric that you care about, right? And, and finally, there's, there's reinforcement learning, which is uh, somewhat of a brand new uh, tactic. And I, I kind of put an image of a neural net here because it, it's, it's like a black box, right? It's kind of hard to explain like how it makes this decision. So uh, the commonality of all three of these approaches is that they, they utilize the same feedback loop, right? Observations, take an action, and you evaluate the outcome. Uh, so reinforcement learning uh, fits nicely into an existing industrial engineering workflow. Uh, so just to dig deeper on each of these approaches, uh, heuristics are, like as I mentioned, the most widely used approach uh, because they're, they're really easy to understand and implement. Um, um, when implementing a heuristic in, in practice, uh, a factory manager uh, knows exactly what's going on. Right, so so it's easy, much easier to sell. Uh, however, the problem is that heuristics are are not so scalable. They can grow to hundred lines of of rules, as you can see on the right. This is kind of like a heuristic that we created. Uh, so if anything changes, uh, it, it's really hard to kind of update it and maintain it. And, and the second uh, con is that they're inflexible. So if anything changes in the environment, uh, you would have to uh, update your heuristic. Uh, next is the optimizer. So to kind of address the limitation with heuristics uh, and to leverage the abundance of compute that we have nowadays, uh, industrial engineers began testing optimizers. Uh, so, so mechanically, what the optimizer does is that it'll, it'll replay the same simulation over and over again 
uh, until it finds the best set of uh, parameters that optimizes a certain outcome. So kind of think of it as like brute forcing a solution. Uh, so they're, they're pretty easy to set up. Uh, so uh, easy to set up and it's, it's not a black box. So you can kind of show your team how it works. Uh, so as you can see on the right, uh, you basically specify your objective. So here's like ma uh, minimizing, or well, should be maximizing total expenditures. Uh, and then you can set the number of iterations. So the number of times to replay the simulation and you just click run and it'll find the best set of parameters. Uh, so the cons is that uh, in real life scenarios, which are much more complicated, slow and just like a heuristic it's static in nature so whenever something changes uh, you basically just have to rerun the optimizer, optimizer uh, which is uh, somewhat uh, impractical in practice uh, and finally uh, there's reinforcement learning which kind of takes the the best of both worlds the heuristic which are learn roles and optimizers which uh, automate the discovery process right so um, with, with these pros, uh, basically, you can think of them as like uh, uh, reasons to consider reinforced learning, right? So if your use case has high variability, uh, think of something like a, a supply chain where demand is unpredictable, uh, a large state space, so it's kind of demonstrated in this, in this graphic right here, uh, which means like a use case where the possible set of outcomes is so large that, that it's really hard to, to optimize. So if you can think of like a, a robotic arm uh, as freedom of movement in 3D space, so the number of possible uh, decisions is, is infinitely large. And if you can imagine trying to write a heuristic for specifying every scenario, uh, it, it would be like a nightmare, it would be impossible. And finally, uh, a use case with multiple contradictory objectives. So, it, an example of this could be like a factory where you want to maximize throughput, but also minimize costs. Uh, if you told a heuristic to, or total optimizer, I mean, to minimize costs, uh, it would basically just turn off production, right? Which is, which is not a, a good outcome. Um, as for cons, um, basically the, the two biggest cons is that, uh, you need a data scientist, which are hard to find and expensive. And uh, reinforcement learning is kind of like a black box. It's kind of hard to explain why I made the decision. And and because of that, it's kind of it's it's hard to explain to say a factory manager or or like your upper management uh, why a policy was doing something, which is uh, kind of scary for them. And they won't want to use it. Uh, finally, I, I just wanted to showcase uh, a couple of use cases. Um, that we applied reinforcement learning to. Uh, so I'm not gonna get into too much detail, but they, they range from, for example, like scheduling machines, like uh, orchestrating assembly lines, uh, supply chain distribution, uh, anything like that. Uh, the thing that I want to mention is that the, the common trait among all these use cases is that uh, they, they have those three characteristics I mentioned in the previous slide. So high variability, large state spaces uh, and multiple contradictory objectives. And, and this is why a reinforcement learning policy was able to outperform uh, a heuristic or optimizer, which are these green boxes here show the improvement over those approaches. Okay, so uh, before proceeding to the demo, just wanted to say that uh, reinforcement learning is not better or worse than a heuristic or optimizer. Uh, it's just another tactic that you can try out uh, we've seen cases where uh, a reinforcement learning policy is, is never able to outperform a, a simple heuristic. Uh, so just keep that in mind. All right, so I'll pass this over to Har now, who will show a simple demo using a heating, ventilation, and, and air conditioning system. Thank you, Edward. Okay, here is the HVAC simulation model. Let's run it. Um, the goal of this model is to optimize energy consumption of a commercial building. HVAC systems use energy to either cool down or heat up the rooms. Traditionally, a PID controller is used to maintain rooms in a 
predefined desired temperature. Using PassMind, we have integrated RL with this model and trained an AI agent. This AI agent achieves about 75% improvement in the performance. Uh, let's uh, look into the model and talk a bit more about the details of the environment. There are several types of employees, each with their own specific characteristics. For example, each employee type has a designated dwelling area, uh, like the researchers mostly are in the research lab, uh, workers in the cafeteria, executives in the conference room, and so on. They also have their own dress codes and the, therefore their own preferred temperature. For example, um, researchers have heavy lab coats, so they prefer cooler environments. Um, if the temperature deviates too much from the employee's comfort level, they will file a complaint ticket. Next, um, there is heat exchange through the walls. So the outside temperature and also the temperature of neighboring rooms affect the temperature of um, affects the temperature um, based on the wall area that they share. So the objective is to keep the number of complaint tickets low while minimizing the energy consumption. As mentioned, the baseline uh, is a PID controller. PID tries to keep um, the temperature around the average comfort uh, temperature of the employees inside the room. This heuristic is not good at handling contradicting objectives, and it's not smart. On the other hand, AI agent learns the schedule of the employees, observes the outside temperature, and takes into account the heat transfer between the rooms. It also uses cooling less than heating because it has learned that cooling consumes more energy. Okay. Let's look inside the model and see um, how you can use PassMind um, and integrate it into your own simulation models. Um, so this model is built on AnyLogic. AnyLogic is a simulation modeling tool that supports agent-based, discrete event, um, system dynamic, and so on. Uh, PassMind could be added to any logic as an external library. Um, you add it at PassMind to any logic, then uh, you have access to PassMind helper in which you can define um, observations, rewards, and actions uh, and elements of RL for your model. For example, for HVAC model, the observations include the outside temperature temperature of each room, number of people on each room, and time of the day. Metrics, which um, are variables that you will use to construct your reward function, are defined here. For this model, we have used the um, number of complaint tickets and uh, a power cost of the electricity. As for actions, um, actions is a tuple of size four for each room, and it decides at what level it should put um, heating or co cooling system. Um, trigger frequency, which um, decides with what frequency PassMind will be queried or RL will be queried. So RL will be making decisions every, um, every one minute. Um, that's it. After you define uh, these boxes, your model is ready to be trained in PassMind web app. To use PassMind web app, um, you can just navigate to PassMind.com. Um, Sign up for a free account, it's, it's free. Or if you already have an account, you can just sign in. Um, when you sign in, you will see a, a, a page much like this. There are already pre-configured um, simulation models that you can click on and go through. Um, 
but for now let's do HVAC model. So let's uh, name your um, project, create a new project and name it like uh, HVAC test. Um, create the project, upload your exported model. Let's see. Okay, no need for this for now. Here, you can uh, set goal for your um, metrics. So back in um, any logic, we have defined complete tickets, um, which we want to minimize, and also um, cost of power, which we want to minimize. If you click next, here, uh, you, you um, Pathfind will generate a reward function for you that you can just um, uh, use that um, and start training. You can uh, you can make uh, new experiments. Uh, for example, here you can choose which observation you want to use for training. Um, let's say we can exclude time um, as observation and start a new training and see how this one will perform. Um, or you can start new trainings and uh, let's say if we care about um, um, cost two times more than um, the number of complaint tickets. So you can start training with that. Um, yeah, simple as that. You can uh, start as many experiments as you want with different observation and different reward functions. Um, so these uh, models are starting to train. Mm, I have already trained um, models here, so I will show you that to, to, so to show you how a fully trained model looks like. Okay, here you see a um, mm, uh, number of complaint ticket, it has started from 200. So in the start of this training, uh, RL is doing basically random actions. So it's trying out different strategies and uh, finding one that um, will, uh, will lead to the, the better optimized solution. and it follows that path. So it's able to uh, reduce number of complaint tickets from 217 to around seven. Um, and um, like um, uh, energy uh, cost from 17 to around 11. Here you can see the reward score, which is basically calculated based on the reward function you have given. Um, as you see, it is it has an upward trend, which means it is um, learning to maximize the reward as it goes through iterations. Um, here you see four different lines. Each of these lines is, are one trials, which each have their own hyperparameters, and, uh, and so and once in a while they look at each other and. Uh, inherent the better performing um, set of hyperparameters. So as you see, the, as uh, training progresses, the, um, the lines converge and uh, they optimize the system. Okay. Um, yeah, after the training is done, you can just export the policy, download the policy as a zip file and go back to any logic and select your policy file and run it in any logic and see how it performs. To compare um, baseline with, uh, with policy, we usually run Monte Carlo experiments since the environment is, uh, has a lot of randomness in it. So just running one, um, experiment well, yeah one experiment is not enough so you do but we use about average of 100 runs okay so that was uh past mine
policy. Let's now run it with the PID controller. So as you see, number of complaints is about the same, but power cost is much lower with PassMide. Okay, um, that was it for the demo. Um, if you want to see more example models, you can um, go to um, cloud.anylogic.com and search for PassMind. There you can find um, many more example models that you can um, just go inside, run the model and compare different um, uh, heuristics versus PassMind um, RL policy. Thank you everyone for participating in our presentation. Um, we look forward to your questions in Q&A section. Thanks.